The unwanted undead adventure can't keep getting away with this, and you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the important things, the things that are on everyone's mind, and that is, they can't keep teasing us with that Lorraine content. The most important thing we're going to discuss this week on the channel, God howdy, do they know how to bait you in? They're like, oh shit, sexy fun times with Lorraine, now we're actually going on an adventure. Now, all jokes aside, I actually legitimately love their relationship. It's so weird. Because at the end of the day, she's basically in love with a zombie body. Sure, he's like in the vampire realm now, but that's a rotting corpse, no matter how you look at it. And I just love the fact that they have such a feisty and flirty attitude with each other, and it's so charming. And I love the idea that you can essentially have what you see in a lot of anime, a lot of like, characters having interest in your MC. Which actually is kind of interesting, because... I think it works more in Rent's favor because he's very mysterious, because, like, he hides his identity, right? Like, not a lot of people know what's under the helmet, so it makes him even more, like, intoxicating to the people he helps. The idea that by the end of this episode, the sister who was going to be a sacrifice for this false god ends up, you know, giving a little peck on the cheek, and she very clearly has a little feelings for him. And just the idea of the reunion at night when they're having dinner... She's like, oh, I bet you have another uh, person wrapped around your little finger. And he's like, nah, 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 I just got a little thanks. And she's pretty much like poking fun. You can tell like they both really like each other, man. Like, it's just so cute. I love it. It's so feisty. But then she's pretty much also like, hey, don't get too close. It's like, I might have to slit a throat if you, uh, if you wander a little too far. I just love it. I love their dynamic. And this was actually the most different feeling episode of the Unwanted Undead Adventure. Because we usually are either in the town or in the dungeon, right? Like, that's what we've been doing. We take a little quest to like a remote village that has this whole like cultist like vibe going on because that's really what it felt like i mean you're pretty much being indoctrinated by a religion saying you need to sacrifice yourself to some guardian of the lake and uh it was quite spicy but i have a full live reaction to today's episode over on my patreon if you want to see my full link of thoughts there over there if you're interested i quite enjoyed this episode it was a breath of fresh air a nice change of pace and honestly i didn't see the twist coming i I really didn't. I thought the twist was that it wasn't a sea serpent, but rather a giant kraken like octopus. I mean, once it started shooting the fireball, I was like, what the? F I, I mean, we're in a weird world. I mean, I'm not going to say a kraken can't shoot a fireball from its eye. That could happen in any fantasy anime. You're just not expecting it. Nope, it was slave traders, and I have to admit, their hustle is kind of impressive. You have this like, this festival that usually goes on every year, and usually it's fine, it's just, you know, they have their culture, they have their beliefs, and now there's this guardian that just randomly decided to wake up and say, give me sacrifices or y'all gonna die. And pretty much, the women are one after the other being offered as tribute, and they never come back. Immediately I'm like, just move. It ain't worth it pack up your bags, let's all hit the road. But we've seen this in stories before, like we see how you get kind of brainwashed and thinking you have to, and as we saw by the sister, she was okay giving her life if it meant protecting the village, and you know, being a tribute, a sacrifice. The idea that these slave traders who, they gave me bad vibes like the merchants, but I didn't think they were having a boat that has like tentacle arms and shooting cannon fire and this, that, and the third. I just thought they were taking advantage of, you know, you know, like, hey, here's some fruit, just tell your mom and dad to buy shit. I was like, oh, they're scummy, but they ain't kidnapping people, right? I thought it was, yeah, there was a giant sea serpent, and he was eating people, and we needed to kill that fool so they could be released by the religious indoctrination. Nope, uh, our boy pulls a Jesus Christ, walks on water, turns out they are abducting, and it's actually pretty clever. It's morally wrong, I'm not saying I support it, but in terms of a practical thing for their world, they would have made mad bank. I mean, female slaves are obviously going to sell more, it's disgusting but it is true and the idea of like day after day taking more hiding them in a hut and then when it was all said and done they were gonna sell it off probably to the highest bidder incredibly fucked up it it is a hundred percent but it's clever as shit using illusion magic to make it look like a giant kraken the cannon on your boat to shoot like fire bolts and shit like it's it was a clever plan it really was and i love how i'm thinking oh man this is gonna be a big cliffhanger we're gonna come into next week we're gonna be fighting this big kraken nope he's just like nah and cuts that boat in half how anticlimactic it was because at the end of the day the only reason they had power in this situation is because it was deception they thought it was their they're basically the guardian of their lake but in fact it was just scumbags 
who deserved the worst punishment. It was a very clever and effective bait and switch that I honestly didn't see coming. You can start the episode off with Lorraine barely keeping that sheet covering the assets, and then we can go into something emotionally heartbreaking when you consider the lies of what would have happened to that village had Rent not come through. Of course, he's looking for different kidnappers, but at the end of the day, he helped the village, and even if he's technically building a harem in the background, goddamn, it's not as shallow as a lot of the shows that do similar things would end up being. I confirmed it last week that for me personally, this is my anime of the season if I'm looking at brand new anime that aren't carryovers or sequels. I like this world. I like the vibe. I think Rent is a badass, and I just generally enjoy following him, man. Like, the first five minutes or so of this episode when he's practicing with his new sword, I don't even know what this man is capable of, but if you give him an unlimited credit credit card in this world that he could buy anything he needs equipment wise he would literally solo the world like he's out here channeling three different types of magics and if he had a durable enough sword maybe a sword made out of dragon scales i don't know the shit he could do is crazy and just the little details they'll do like after he used divinity on the tree stump it started growing some plant life on it like just it's the little details in the writing that really flex the fantasy world element about this. And honestly, I just continue to think back of my first couple of episodes, like the thought I had on this show. I was like, damn, this is a lot more interesting than I first gave it credit for. But I never expected to love this show to the point that I'm like, oh, this is going to be in a top 10 of the year for me. Or potentially even a top 5. Like, I never felt that strongly at the start of the show, but how quickly it snowballed into me being like, give me more Ren, give me more Lorraine, and somehow these one and done characters, like since episode two when we got introduced to that girl, right? Some of these characters he adventures with and travels with potentially will come back and we'll see them from time to time. But in a lot of ways, Ren is, the two main central focus are Rent and Lorraine and of course the uh, guild woman who um, works at the front desk or whatever. But the idea that there's so many characters he'll interact with, but they feel memorable for their stories. I'm not going to forget about this village and what happened, but we probably won't ever touch upon them again, at least for this season. And that's okay because they did their job and it felt like this world is actually truly opening up. And while the animation and production isn't the best of this season, I do generally enjoy how the magic looks especially when he was channeling the different energies and how he was like I thought he was about to blow up the whole capital like when he started channeling all three I was like oh god he's about to blow up this whole city isn't he and the fact that like pretty much everyone who knew Rent from his original life can recognize this as the same man you would have to be blind or not have like a strong connection to realize but they're handling the interactions very well I can meme and make jokes about the sexy anime girl in the show but at the end of the day, they're more than just the visual eye candy, but the studio definitely knows what they're doing in those certain moments. But let me know what you thought of the Unwanted Undead Adventure Episode 8 down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, of course, ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload more. And hey, like I mentioned, we have that full live reaction over on my Patreon, and while you're over there, I'll also give you a video shout out. So today we got Snake Eater 7, Nathan Semichuk, GG78CC, and Cassicle. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.